Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris and today we are reviewing another Glam Light product. It is the Street Taco Palette. Ah, I'm so, so hyped. You guys know how I feel about Glam Light, so you should get used to this. I mean, honestly, if you're new here, then you're probably like, okay, calm it down. Why are you so hyped? It's because I absolutely love Glam Light. I am an affiliate, by the way. Just wanna get that out in the open right now doesn't mean that I'm not going to bring my full honesty to this. So I do have some uh, of my own opinions about this palette. So of course, stay tuned to hear that. I do have a giveaway going on for this palette. Of course, this is mine, but here is another one completely sealed. I bought another one for a lucky winner down in the comment section. I'm going to tell you how to enter that in a little bit. Just watch the video because I really want you to see my thoughts on this palette. I know sometimes you guys skim and you just enter. I get that. But those who really follow me to hear what I have to say, I really would love it if you guys just hear it, you can enter, and all that stuff. This is randomly selected, and yeah, let's dive into this video. This is the box that it comes in. This one's mine. It's open. It's empty. It's really cute. It has the little design. This is, by the way, a mini version. This is the huge version. Now, I'll be honest, I love the way this one looks because it looks like a real taco versus like the kind of cartoon one that this one looks like but honestly i just i really care about the palette more about the the formula the performance yada yada which we'll get into in a little bit i hate this light like it just it does this all the time sometimes i look super white sometimes i look it's crazy. Now this is a sturdy box. Glam Light doesn't play with their packaging. Like I feel like I could fling it across the room and it's not gonna damage the box. In the back of this, it just gives a little bit of information of, you know, the taco palette. It says the ingredients here and it does contain talc and mica. It has an 18 month shelf life. It is vegan and it is cruelty free. And then of course, I already showed you guys, but this is a street taco palette. Let me bring it up a little closer you can see. In the back, of course, we have the warning which says, do not eat super cute i would have loved to see a little tiny nutrition facts on here because i just love to see the nutrition facts but that's okay it's not something that i'm gonna lose my mind over but uh yeah this is the packaging it has how many grams are in this product which is 9.5 grams if you want a comparison to the big one this is 21 grams okay so that is a big difference but again this is travel friendly slip this in your purse and you're good to go so if you want to enter the giveaway listen from here on out this is how the street taco sorry not the street taco the taco palette looks right we have these beautiful shades and of course we have the mini one right now I want to put them side by side so you guys can see you know the comparison things like that you can fold the, the mini one by the way all the way back I forgot to say that I usually say that all the time in my videos <laughs> but here you go this is them side by side oh there you go <laughs> centered side by side okay what's gotten interesting is that a lot of people have noticed that there are certain shadows in here that look identical for example pollo is also in here pollo and it's the same name we have pico de gallo in here and in here it's also pico de gallo same name and then we also have um carne asada in here same thing in here now, this is where people kind of got upset. I got several messages, DMs, comments, well, one comment, but several messages in my DMs asking, hey, Chris, um, what's going on? Because she said it was all new shadows. They were going to be all brand new. So why are we seeing three of the same shadows? So you guys know I do pre-recorded swatches of everything. So I did do pre-recorded swatches for the Street Taco palette, but I am going to just show those three only in terms of comparisons because nothing else in this palette is in that one other than those three. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys live swatches. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys pictures that I took from my other swatches of comparing the same sets of shadows. For now, I'm just going to do the live one because I think that's important to show. I'm going to take Boyo, right? There we go. Whoa. And put that here. Right? There you go. And then I'm just gonna dust this off here. I do that all the time, but usually on my leg, but I wanna show it up top so you can see what I'm doing. Boil from here. Right? And I'm gonna put that right here. There you go. So I'm gonna bring this up close so you guys can see. 
Those are two very different colors. The boyo from the taco palette is darker than the one on the bottom. I'm gonna show you Pico de Gallo. Let's take the one from the taco palette right here. So pretty. This one, honestly, one of my favorite shades ever, ever from Glam Light, maybe from any palette, honestly. Here it goes. Pico de Gallo. Look. Oh, so stunning. Sorry. Let's wipe this right here. My arm. Ooh. Make my finger feel funny. <laughs> All right, let's take Pico de Gallo here. Okay. Here we go. Put that right under here. Okay. Let's move this up close. One of them is obviously not as like shimmery loud as the other, and that is the one from the street pal the street taco palette, excuse me. And the Pico de Gallo one from the taco palette is more vibrant, right? However, there's something else that I noticed. The Pico de Gallo from the uh, Street Taco palette has a pink undertone. It has a lot more pink. And the one from the Taco palette has more orange. I looked very closely. Now, before I continue and I show the last one, know that I did go to the owner of Glam Light with this issue because I feel like it is my responsibility as someone who loves Glam Light, just a fan of them, and also an affiliate. Someone who that, you know, I have promoted them all the time on my channel because I really do love their stuff, right? I feel like it's my responsibility to give you guys accurate information and give you guys the answers to your questions, right? And just know that the owner, she's really great. She's an open book. If you guys were to message her, she'll probably answer you, especially if you're respectful, but like, hey, you know, I saw that you put in a post and I'll put a screenshot right here that said they're all brand new, but these look identical. Can you tell me what happened? Because when I went to her with that, and I'll put some screenshots up so you see I'm telling the truth. She said, this is what I've done before. Hold that thought. I'm gonna take the carne asada from Taco Palette. Here we go. Ooh, honestly, love that brown. It's really deep, really rich. Here we go. <sighs> Breathtaking. Then I'm gonna take the carne asada here, right? And I'm gonna put that right underneath. Okay, so now I'm gonna come up close. If you look closely, this one has more red in it versus this one, which is a deeper, deeper brown chocolate. If you look closely. Now, I showed you guys them live. Now I'm gonna show you guys the pictures of, ooh, after my face adjusts, there you go. Now I'm gonna show you guys the picture of the ones that I took with the flash up close to the light because it's even this is kind of hard to tell and things like that but they are different so when she said that she's done this before i'm like wait what the pizza palette that started it all the obsession right <laughs> here it is all the shadows of the pizza palette these tiny ones she put those same names in here and they were different shadows jalapenos right i'm gonna take it jalapenos from the mini Put it right here, which is a shimmer. And then I'm gonna go back to the pizza palette and, oh, there we go, sorry. Take jalapenos, which is right here, okay? If you have the pizza palette, you can look at this yourself too. Follow me. Totally different, right? More visible that it is different. The only thing for me is the, the pollos, they're pretty different to me. I don't think that's the same whatsoever, okay? Um, but these two, the Pico de, the Pico de Gallo, and which one was this one again? The Carne Asada, a bit too close. That to the, to the point where it's really hard to see a difference from actual view, just looking at the shadows, and then from the swatch, because you have to look very closely. So that's the only thing I would say. I would hope to see a bigger difference of those shadows so that this never happens again, where people are like upset and, and they're like, oh, she said it was going to be all different ones, but three of them are the same. I think to avoid that, to just make it more, more different for the next one. And honestly, she listens to feedback, especially when it's given out of love and, you know, constructive criticism. So I hope if she's watching this, she knows I'm saying it out of love because I absolutely love Glamline. You guys know that. So yeah, that's my my take on it. So in case you were wondering why it's the same name, she's been doing it for so long. I did ask her, by the way, if my undertones were correct. Like, did I get them right? She was like, yep, you did. That's exactly what those undertones 
were. So it made me feel better because honestly, <laughs> I felt really proud of myself digging a little deeper because I had to dig a little deeper for you guys because I don't want to give you any inaccurate information. Last thing I want to talk about is the formula, the actual ingredients in these two palettes. They are not the same. And by the way, the reason why I thought to look at that was one particular shade in here that felt different going in with the swatch. And I believe that's El, pa that's El Pastor. This one right here, it didn't feel... It didn't feel as smooth as the rest of them. Doesn't mean it's not gonna work. It just means that I might use a different technique to use that particular shadow. So because of that, I went in the back and I looked at the ingredients. I'm like, okay, why does that feel different? I know it's, it's not the same. So with that being said, I'm not gonna compare this palette to this because the ingredients are not the same. If they were the same, then I'd just compare it, right? Because the palette should be the same because the form is the same, but since it's different, you gotta treat it different so i treat this like a brand new palette so in order to enter this giveaway all you have to do is of course follow me be a subscriber that's easy the second thing is to comment down below what you think of what i just said it's still in your brain you don't have to agree with me i don't care just comment down below be respectful always remember that comment down below tell me your honest thoughts tell me what you think and that's it you're entered into the giveaway to snag yourself a street taco palette with that being said let's go ahead and show the pre-recorded swatches the swatches came out beautifully guacamole red onions carnitas and pico de gallo these are the shimmers in here they have that same texture that you see in her other palettes is more on the oily side which means it's more of a baked shadow i like baked shadows i feel like they are easier to use so let me show you some other swatches live even though i did the other ones i won't touch those let me show you hmm, let me show you carnitas um lemon let's see Ooh, took too much of that sometimes i go way too hard into these palettes like you gotta relax chillax chris red onions and what else did i not show i don't know let's just show picante there we go these four right here sorry i'm going down my arm today aren't i here we go this is one two Ooh, see i took too much like I said, three, oh, so pretty, and four. Oops, sorry, just smoothing it out, not digging in more, just smoothing it out. And there they are on the bottom. So, so pretty. Love it so much. For this eye look, I went ahead and I used the Morphe M326 brush, the Crayon Case flat brush, the M222 brush, and then the, what is this, JH thirty nine brush. I always forget the numbers, I can never remember, but these are the ones that I use often. So I need to like get my life together and just remember them. That'd be much, much better than just doing this all the time. <laughs> okay guys, so I know you normally just see me do a speed through and then I do like my voiceover and things like that. And it's honestly because it's almost impossible doing any kind of long video with me talking because my son interrupts every two seconds or there's just a lot of noise in my house. So I like to do it that way, but I think it's important for this video to actually show you step by step and I'll do my best not to cut anything out to just try to do a smooth one I have a hard time talking sometimes but I'm gonna do it that way because I really think it's important for you guys to see that there's nothing going on I'm not changing a brush I'm not adding anything this will be a hundred percent authentic and I just hope that I can last that long without fumbling words so much so you might hear me say sorry my bad or mess up a few times but hopefully I'm not gonna so we're gonna start off with the Kylie Cosmetics uh, maple concealer I use this all the time and put this right on my lid I like to put a, a good amount, not too much, but this is a really good concealer. I think it's also important, you know, to use a good base when you are viewing a palette. And concealers is a good option to use. I've used this for multiple videos. I think almost every single one of my videos, actually. And it's worked out. It's worked out perfectly. So there you go. It's set in. I use a uh, beauty no, this isn't beauty. <laughs> this is a Juno. <laughs> Juno and Co. <laughs> sponge. Sorry, guys. I have a lot of sponges, but I use Juno and Co. all the time. I don't know why it's a beauty blender. But anyways, we're going to move along. I am going to grab my brush. So as I mentioned earlier, er, excuse me, see what I'm talking about? <laughs> this is why I cut all stuff. As I mentioned earlier, this palette has different ingredients. So whenever I go in with a palette I don't normally know, I go with my M222 brush. You guys hear me talk about this brush all the time. There's nothing on this brush. Got some 
hair is sticking out though. It's starting to get a little crazy. But I am just going to wipe it on my leg. Mm, matter of fact, no. I want to show you guys everything I'm doing. I'm going to wipe it on my arm to make sure there's nothing. Then I'm going to do this. Nothing on my hand. So there's nothing on the ugh, brush or anything. With this brush, I'm going to take... Where am I going to start? I think I'm going to start with the orange. Uh, picante right here. Putting it in just like this. I'm going to tap. Oh, actually, take a little more. Just like that. You see this? And I'm going to put it right in there. Right here. No BS. No nothing. And I'm just tapping it in. And there's pigment. Pigment for days. I think it's important to know how to use certain shadows. How to, what brushes to use for those shadows. And I think it's my job also to show you guys that as well. You know, because that's, I'm a reviewer, right? I want to show you guys how to get this palette to work. And if I do everything I can and I still don't get it to work, then I'll give my honest opinion. Like, uh, you didn't do too great or whatever. So that's Picante. I'm going to move on to El Pastor. El Pastor. El Pastor. El Pastor. What's wrong with me? Uh, anyways, so there it goes. I even have to put a lot of it. You guys saw it. Normally I speed through this process, but I'm just going to show it for now. And I'm only going to do this for the beginning part, guys. I'm going into the See what I mean? I'm going back into it again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. See the importance of cutting and editing. Otherwise, this video is going to be like 20 years long. But there you go. You can definitely see that pink. It's there. It's pigmented. That's what I'm talking about. Dusting it off again on my shoulder because I really don't care. Um, I'm going to go in with what color did I use? Oh, okay. Repollo Rojo, which is the purple. Zap it a little bit off. Again, here we go. I'm putting this in the corner. Look how pretty, especially that purple. Like, tch, gorgeous. But again, it's all about what brushes you use, right? You gotta know what brushes to use, especially when you're working with a specific kind of formula. Now granted, this formula is different from her other ones. We talked about that earlier. That doesn't mean it doesn't work. And but it but it does mean that you have to approach it approach it differently. Blech, sorry, fumbling on my words, fumbling on my words. I I sing a lot, by the way. You guys never see that, but I edit that part out. But look at that. It's beautiful, stunning. Like it's there. It's what it is. All right, guys. So this part, I, again, just dusting. Sorry, I'm used to doing it on my leg. <laughs> But this part, I am just going to cut my crease, and then I'm going to come back, because that part, I feel like you really don't have to see. I'm going to cut my crease, and then we're going to continue with me talking it through. Be right back. Okay, guys, so as you can see, cut my crease. Now I'm going to go back into the palette. I'm going to go with Lemon right here. This is a crayon case brush. I used this in my last video. It's just a flat brush. I usually use this for shimmers, but I'm going to use it for this. I'm... <clears throat> Sorry, got a little bit of pico de gallo there. But I'm going to use it for Limon just because I feel like it's a better uh, brush to use when I have a cut crease look. It just helps me control the shadows more, which is, again, it's just, it's important to know how to use certain shadows. So I'm going to take this. I'm just going to put it, what did I do here? Oh, I do this a lot, by the way, to check what I did. I'm going to put it at the outer part of my eye. And as you can see, it's really pretty. It is stunning up. It's stunning showing up this is why guys i edit so much <laughs> i say things that i'm like wait what did you just say girls like you did not mean that at all now what happens sometimes when you put a shadow on top of a concealer is that that dark part at the end will happen but um i know a little trick to take that out and it's just you know just patting a little bit more eyeshadow eyeshadow excuse me of that color on later it kind of like goes away a little bit it happens when it's a bit too wet but either way the shadows itself gets pigmented and it is showing up i don't like to cut my crease all the time but when i do i try to go dramatic and bold i don't know why i whispered that <laughs> but it worked out for me 
okay so I'm not gonna go all the way into the inner corner of my eye but I'm gonna bring it close enough okay sorry my eye folds is crazy how many of you guys have a hooded eye let me know down below I hate my hood sometimes because it makes that crease and I hate that crease like it's so bad but I do what I can I do what I can that's it okay now I know it looks crazy but trust the process it'll look better a little bit hopefully I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know honestly I don't care if I make a busted look my point my objective here is to show that the shadows are pigmented and stunning and I hope I'm able to show you that by the end of this video in all honesty because it makes me sad when I see people not giving this palette a fair review you know a good review you know give it a fair shot all right so I'm just gonna take this here look at that so I had way more in there I got my thumbnail it's gonna look so gross because this is all dirty but oh well <laughs> All right, so it's off. Uh, what did I do next? Oh, I went in with guacamole. Again, same brush, not wetting it. As you can see, here it is. Ow. <laughs> I'm just going to put it here. And bam. Really pretty. Add some more because you can layer this bad boy. Bam. Oh, I love the shade. Now, let's say you want even more pigment, like it to be more vibrant, you can just take your finger and do this. Now I'm just blending it on top of the green. You can literally just bring it in yourself. I don't like to always do that because, you know, I don't want to mess up or go over <laughs> something else and screw that over. But this is what I do sometimes. And just so you guys can see everything that I'm doing. That's why I'm doing it on my shoulder. I'm so used to putting it on my leg though. It's a weird adjustment, it's weird. I'm just gonna bring this over a little bit more. I think that's what I did, yeah. Over a little more, a little more. Then I'm gonna go back into the green and adjust that part because I see that I brought the green actually a little further. Sometimes I forget what I do. That's why it's important to write stuff down. I normally write stuff down, guys. <laughs> but today, not so much. Not so much. Today's a little nuts for me. Okie dokie. So now I just compare eyes. And I'm trying to figure out what I did here. Do here. Because like I said, I didn't write anything down. Um, first, like I said, I'm going to go back in with the green. I'm actually going to use the M222 brush. Right here. Yeah, that's a good amount. Go back in a little bit more. So I brought it in a little further. You see that? It kind of like fills in a gap a little bit it makes it look prettier too I think that's close I think I got it right not a hundred percent sure but that's close enough for me I'm not sure I don't like this line what I did here we're gonna go with it I don't think that, I don't know I don't know what I'm doing there I don't know what the line is going I don't know all right let's test this off and I did bring picante, this orange, down more. So I'm just going to bring that back. Oh, not that much. A little bit. And just bring it down. Oof, I don't want to mess this up. I get nervous. Maybe I shouldn't use this big brush. Oh, there you go. Not that bad, not that bad, not that bad. It's just a little more. Not that much. There you go. There. Because I actually go in with, what's this called? Pico de Gallo, which swatches beautifully in this palette. And as I mentioned earlier, it has a different undertone from the other one, but I still like this one. So it's just a different vibe of it. And here it is on my brush, dry once again. I'm gonna put it right here. It's like touching the orange. And a little skimmy right over which one guacamole that I put down earlier and I'm bring it up on the orange bar a little higher because that's what I did here 
and there you go. Just like, oop, wrong one. <laughs> I just took picante by accident. Go back to pico de gallo. And go here again. And there you go. Now at this point, I just try to match it. So I'm gonna bring guacamole back because I think I want a little bit too much. There's still some green there at the bottom. Yes, something like that. I did something like that. I don't know what I did here, but <laughs> I did something like that. All right, so now it's the lower lash line. What I did was I took the JH, what is this, 39 brush. I'm not wearing my glasses. I'm so blind without my glasses. I go into Limon just a little bit, and I'm going to bring it here just so it can meet the lower lash line. I probably should have used this brush to... Do go over the like the cut crease part. I don't know why I didn't do that. <laughs> Just gonna dust it off on my shoulder. And then what did I do? Oh, I went to the purple mat again. And then I used that here. So let me go a little more. Took it lightly. I didn't have to take it that lightly. A little more. I like to take my time like going in little by little versus going in too much. Because you can't take that back you know what I mean and then I went in with did I do a pastel oh no I did orange I did the pique um picante can't speak I quit I quit speaking and I did that here to meet with the orange here just a little bit and then I took el pastor and I did that under everything just running it across giving it a blend I think that's what I did. It's kind of hard for me to remember. Again, I should have wrote this down, but I didn't. All right, so let's take this crayon case brush one more time. I think I brought this green down further. I think I did. It looks like I did right here. So I'm just going to do that a little bit. Yeah, I don't know what the heck I did. <laughs> Because honestly, guys, when I get a palette, I'm just like, yay, let's play with it. And I just get lost in it. And I forgot to actually bring a color for your blend. You can't, I don't know if you can tell a little bit. There is a color that I blended there very, very lightly. And that is El Pastor. Very, like, a little bit. Because it's, it's pigmented, so you don't want to take a lot. And I go just ever so lightly above the orange. Oof. So even that's a, a lot. Oof, see? Go too much. Ugh. Okay. There we go. Above it, above it. Yeah. It's like just kind of a shadow. If you think about it. It's not even like a full softening of a line that I normally do. It's like just shadowing it. There. Ish. Okay. All right. The last thing I believe I did before the lashes was I put. Where's the brush? Oh, here it is. This is mm -hmm, the M326 brush. Use this little sucker often. And I went in with, which one did I use? Oh, Pico de Gallo. Very little of it, like little bit. Because I don't want like an orangey highlight, but it's really pretty right here. Like it's really pretty. Mm, I could use a little more. Ugh. Going very little because I don't want to look too orangey. That makes sense. You can see it. Yeah, you can definitely see it. I put more on this side actually. Put a little more. Don't be scared, Chris. Don't be scared. All right, there you go. And guess what? I actually did the same thing for my cheek. In all honesty, I tried this first. Oh, I got some lemon there. No. I'm just gonna take the corner a little bit. And I tried that first, so I did that. Right? Because I just wanted to try a different shadow as a highlighter. So I'll show you what I did. There you go. Right? But I don't know if you guys can tell. It gives me like a, a gray, a darker cast because it is a darker eyeshadow. It's not really meant for the cheeks. So I didn't like that. <laughs> so let me dust it off again. And ow, I keep hurting myself. Guys, this is going to become a 20-minute video of Chris hurting herself and fumbling on words. But um, then I took Pico de Gallo a little bit. Ugh. Okay, a little bit. And I put that on top and then made the color 
better. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope you can. Look a little more. It's just a very soft highlight, I think. I don't know. I don't know how it looks on you, but I can see it from here. It looks pretty. It's subtle. And yeah, that's it, you guys. That's all I did. Other than that, I put on the Big Ego Mascara. I honestly forgot to use it on my upper lash, but I'm just going to keep it true to what I did. I'm not going to add it now. It's no big deal. I have ginormous lashes on. Camarones. I got these. Where did I put it? Because I cut them. Oh, okay, here it is. I had to cut it because they were a bit too big for my eye. I'm not going to show you guys this part because it's going to take 20 years for me to do. Oh, and then I did use a liner. Where? There you go. The calligrapher liner. So I'm going to do this part off camera, come back, and we're going to end this video. Okay, guys. Well, here it is. This is the eye all done with the lash and liner, things like that. I had a lot of fun <laughs> making this eye look, but I'm going to zoom you guys back and tie this up just so that you guys know moving forward i'm not going to do this kind of video again in terms of a long lengthy video unless i feel like i need to defend a brand and show that it is good and things like that because sometimes i feel like it's good to show an unedited straight through version not taking anything out again sorry for all the mumbles and me messing up words and things like that this is why i edit i kind of hate hearing the playback when i go edit and it's like goodbye take that out goodbye take that out but this time around i left it in because i really wanted to show you guys and i'm not bsing you know dusting it on my shoulder things like that i wanted to show you guys just it performing straight through i mean i've never bs to you you guys know that whether i'm an affiliate or not it does not matter it's not what this is about this is about me feeling like i'm an affiliate yes which means i represent this brand and for me that means i need to show you guys why i love this brand i need to show you guys that things work or things don't work but i need to also for any palette honestly show you guys that I'm doing everything I can to make it work. You guys can take that however you want to. Remember in the comment sections, you guys, we don't have to agree. Let's just be respectful of each other. The moment we cross that line is the moment that I just say bye-bye to that comment because I don't, I don't welcome that in this channel. We can disagree always open for discussion but just be respectful okay uh let me know your thoughts down below remember the giveaway is still open you have a chance at entering the giveaway and getting your hands on the street taco pellet which again still sealed so that's still open remember to leave your comment down below you know what kind of comment if you watch the video and yeah that's all i have to say i hope that you guys are okay with this kind of style again not gonna happen like that again i like to do short sweet to the point videos so that's enough talking i'll see you guys in the next video I told you guys i'll be coming back and banging out videos i'm doing it i swear <laughs> bye <laughs>